Hi guys, welcome to Isolation Libations, episode 14, take two. Uh, yeah, I just recorded this and it didn't take, so there's uh, 10 minutes down the drain. So today's theme is patience, patience. <sighs> well, my name's Joey Joyce. I am your bartender for tonight. I'm guiding you through making some cocktails to pair with Brian Chartrand's Happy Half Hour live on Facebook at 5 o'clock West Coast time every weeknight. If you miss it live, you can always go back and check him out uh, on his Facebook page. He'll still be there. You can watch all the great shows that you might have missed. <sighs> deep breaths, deep breaths. Gonna make it. Uh, anyway, that's all right. Who am I to complain? Uh, in case you missed it, uh, this week's theme was uh, Don't Look Close. That's one of Brian's original songs um, off of the, his Worth the Fight album. Um, the idea being that these are cocktails that if you look closely, you'll see they're not so much different from the classic cocktail that they're based on. So while they may have their own name, um, kind of are a standalone, unique cocktail, they really owe a lot to that parent cocktail. Um, so if you look closely, you can see, oh, that's just, that's the same thing. That's the same thing as the last word. That's just the final word. Um, but uh, so today we're doing a, a favorite cocktail of mine that for all intents and purposes is just a Negroni with bourbon. It's the Boulevardier. Now, a little history on the Boulevardier. It uh, first appeared in print in 1927 in um, Harry McElhone's uh, bar book. I believe it's called Bar Flies and Cocktails. Um, he was a bar owner in Paris, um, Harry's New York bar in Paris. And he attributed the cocktail to Erskine, Erskine? I'm not sure how to say his first name, uh, Gwyn. And he was sort of a bon vivant. Um, a publisher, he had a magazine called The Boulevardier, and apparently this was his uh, cocktail recipe. Now, uh, Boulevardier, that word apparently kind of means like a, a, a playboy, um, a man about town, someone who is uh, certainly imbibing a few cocktails and kind of living the good life and having a lot of fun in Paris in the 20s. Um, so, that being said, 1927, that, that's a long time ago, so this is no uh, new cocktail, right? Um, however, it owes its heritage to a Negroni, which came about in around 1919, is when you started to see that um, in print, uh, but that was coming from Italy, so um, a little bit different locale. So this is, um, yeah, bourbon-based, but otherwise, equal parts, 111, sweet vermouth, Campari, and bourbon. Um, if you go to a lot of craft cocktail bars now, a lot of bartenders will want to use rye with the Boulevardier, and that's fine. They'll argue that it, it balances better for the assertiveness of the Campari and the sweet vermouth. Um, so the rye kind of stands up more. I'm going to make it um, like the classic uh, with bourbon and equal parts. Another thing a lot of bartenders will do, will do more whiskey than Campari and sweet vermouth. They won't do the equal parts, uh, and that works as well too but uh we're gonna keep it classic tonight and uh just do the one ounce of each i will say if you are using bourbon you should use something um that's at least 100 proof this is our evan williams bottled and bond so if you do something that's just like an 80 proof i do think it will get a little washed out by that campari because that campari has such a bitter kick that anything that's less than 100 proof might just get washed away. Um, now, if you could only see that first video I made, I uh, made some really good jokes, it was really funny, uh, we we're having a really good time, and now I'm just, uh, just a bitter, bitter person. I'm as bitter as that bottle of Campari, but not really. Now I get a second Boulevardier. I shouldn't complain. All right, so let's go ahead and make this drink again. So we're starting out with Campari. You could try it with a different red bitter liqueur, but I think Campari, the original, just a great way to go. 
And then for sweet vermouth, I would usually use Carpano Antica, um, but I would probably use rye whiskey with that. Since we are using bourbon, the Punti Mez, since it has a little bit more bitterness, I think will actually work well with the bourbon instead of a rye. And again, one ounce here. If you have the Dolan Rouge vermouth, I actually like that one a lot in a Boulevardier. Um, give that a go. And last but certainly not least, our whiskey, our Evan Williams Bottle and Bond. One ounce. Going back to the old pan in the ice method. It's okay, as we learn, copper is gonna kill anything anyway. All right, you will notice that it appears to be nighttime. And my ice isn't stirring because it's frozen. Oh, the ice is frozen. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, I was saying, it appears to be nighttime. Even though you may be watching this on Thursday in the day. It's uh, movie magic. Movie magic. We have a very large budget on this isolation libation set. That's why the wind noise was so terrible on yesterday's video. And apparently sometimes this phone doesn't like to record video, just only sound. Okay, so you're nice and stirred. You could do the Boulevardier up. Oh, I do prefer it more on the rocks. But again, it's all to your preference. Now our garnish is going to be the orange swath. Remember skin side out, and then when you Kind of give it a squeeze, all that oil is going to spray over the glass, give it that nice bright orange oil. And you can remember wipe the rim of the glass, that gets even more orange oil on the glass, it'll get on your hand, it'll smell really good. It'll clean off any of that weird stuff that's on your hand. Orange oil is good. All right, well, thanks for bearing with me. Sorry uh, you didn't get the the A plus first episode, but hopefully this one works. Hopefully you can see me here in the dark. And uh, cheers until tomorrow. Ah, I need the second one. Ciao.